For 10 years, we absolutely hated the guy when he played for Washington. He was number 91 then, and he was terrorizing the Philadelphia Eagles. He joins me now. I'm Eagles insider Dave Spadaro. Happy to welcome in Ryan Kerrigan, the newest Philadelphia Eagle. Ryan, hello. How are you? Welcome to the Eagles defense. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Okay, so uh, Roger Clemens leaves the Red Sox to go with the Yankees. Um, Brett Favre leaves Green Bay to go with Minnesota. Does Ryan Kerrigan leaving Washington to play with the rival Philadelphia Eagles, does that rate in your mind? And, and how much fun are you having with all this? I mean, I don't know if I'm Roger Clemens or Brett Favre, but if you're going to call me that, thank you very much. But I'm sure it took a lot of people by surprise, given that, you know, I played in Washington for, for my 10 previous seasons. But it felt right, honestly, from the second my visit here started. So this is, uh, this is where I wanted to be, and, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. What kind of reaction have you gotten both from Washington fans, who I know you have been really close with, as well as Eagles fans? I mean, the Eagles fans have been pumped. They, uh, you know, they've been nothing but, you know, encouraging on, you know, in social media and whatnot. And as you can imagine, some of the Washington fans that were were not too happy. I mean, a lot of them. I, I think the vast majority were wishing me well and saying good luck. But there was there was certainly a couple that were that were none too pleased. Right. What was it like for you after ten years in Washington to be in the position where you were kind of choosing your next destination and and why Philadelphia? It was odd at first. I mean, you're not. You're, I'd never been in free a free agent throughout my 10 year career, so it was a, a different experience. But just from the moment I, I set foot in, in Novacare, it really just felt like it felt like the place that I was supposed to be at. Like everyone was super nice, super welcoming. I'm excited to work with Coach Gannon in the defense here because I feel like they're gonna you know really put us in good positions to succeed defensively. And so this was definitely the, the right choice for me. You touched on it a bit when you met the media earlier. Um, you know Philadelphia as well as any opposing player could. So what was it like coming to Lincoln Financial Field? You know, I know how the buses come in and I know how the Eagles fans are waiting for you. But just from that all the way through, the process of playing against the Eagles, and even when it, the Eagles played Washington down there, there were always tons of Eagles fans in the stands. Yeah, the fans definitely travel really well. That was always a very noticeable thing whenever we played the Eagles. But you know, coming to Philadelphia it was tough. I mean, we knew it was going to be a hostile environment, that the fans weren't going to like us, and they were going to let us know that they don't like us. And what I saw that is, is those fans care about their home team, and so that's why I'm excited to be a part of it now. 95 and a half career sacks. What has been the key to your success, do you think? Good fortune. I mean, I've been really lucky to play a lot of football, been able to play a lot of seasons and a lot of snaps within those seasons. And I'd like to think I work hard, too. I mean, I do a lot to take care of my body and you know, make sure I'm ready to go for not only Sunday, but the practice days as well, because I know that's when you really kind of hone in on your craft. So I really try to put my all into this game, and I hope to hope that shows this, this season. Ryan, I always enjoyed talking to Lane Johnson prior to games against Washington, working against you, and he always really gave a great technical breakdown of what – makes you such a great football player. So I'm going to ask you the same thing about Lane. First, how was it playing against him? And what makes him such a great right tackle? It's not fun playing against him, I'll tell you that. I mean, he's an unbelievable right tackle. To be able to move the way he does at his size, I mean, it, it makes it really tough for us on the edge. And he's very technically sound with his sets and with his hands and his timing with his hands. And so he's a really tough matchup, and I'm glad that I won't be seeing him on Sundays this season. Ryan, what do you think about early impressions here about the defense uh, and about what this group can possibly accomplish. I know it's way too early to really get into it, but just early thoughts. Talking to Coach Gannon, I really feel like you know he's going to allow us to really, really succeed on the edge and on the you know on the you know line of scrimmage. Which well, that's all I can really ask for as a guy that plays on the line line of scrimmage is to be put in a position that's uh, going to allow us to be successful. And that's what I think Coach Gannon's going to do. You've played the game with such great intensity. Were you born that way? Did you develop a love of the game at a really early age? I mean. Where does that come from? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely developed a love for the game at an early age. I mean, I just remember uh, watching football with my dad when I was a kid, and I could see how much he loved watching football, and I think that kind of passed off onto me. But then when I got to college, I remember my defensive line coach, uh, Terrell Williams, he said, the best compliment you can get as a defensive lineman is, man, that guy plays hard. And so I really took that to heart and, and kind of you know tried to make it so that people looked at me and said, man, that guy plays hard. Ryan, last year... I mean, tough year, no fans in the stands. I know you have such a great connection. What was it like not having, not feeding off of the, the crowd and, and then kind of not being able to, you know, look up into the stands one more time with the Washington fans who've been so supportive of you? 
It was tough, for sure. I mean, I remember our first game against Philadelphia last year, and that was, you know, our first taste of not having fans in the stands, and it was bizarre. I mean, it was so quiet, and I really noticed it after the national anthem, because normally after the fans cheer and kind of really get ready for kickoff, and when the national anthem finished in that first game last year, it was just crickets, and we were like, man, okay, this is real. There are no fans here. So that was disappointing, but I'm glad we're trending in the way to get fans back in the stands this fall. Last one for you, way away from the game of football. I know you love dogs. You've put a lot of time and effort into the rescue of dogs, bulldogs in particular. First, could you tell me the story of involving your dogs in your wedding and then the the rescue part of it? Why is that such a big deal to you? Um, It's a big deal to me because, I mean, my my wife is very, very passionate about uh, animal rescue in particular, bulldog rescue. She uh, definitely brought that, you know, kind of brought that sphere into my life. And I've and I've really been thankful that she did because it's been really rewarding to see some of the homes that were, you're able to put put uh, put these dogs who are born into tough conditions in. Um, but having our dogs in our wedding, we had them walk down the aisle, you know, and they had little, you know, you know, tuxedo collars on and they, they were looking the part. And of course, one of them, you know, had to take a potty break right down the middle of the aisle on the, on, <laughs> as they were walking down. So, um, but that made for a great story, and they're uh, they're definitely a huge part of our lives. Awesome, great stuff, Ryan Kerrigan. Thank you so much. Welcome to Philadelphia, and thanks for taking the time with me today. Thank you.